What's going on everybody, Nobori here. Today we're going to be going over my Kalari build-in guide. Unfortunately, the sound of this match did not save, but I don't want to keep you guys waiting any longer for my Kalari build-in guide, so here it is, and it's called Who's Next? If you guys have any questions about alternatives to use in this deck, feel free to drop them in the comments below so we can discuss some options for your changes. But right here, we got a Mana Potion, Strike Token, Health Potion, Stalker's Key, Wind Covered Blades, we have three, Amulet of the Veteran, just in case we need some extra health late game, and three Fountain Spikes. Let's get right in here with a Strike Token, Mana Potion, and a Health Potion. This will get us off in the first amount of the jungle. First off, I'm going to start with Crippling Dagger so I can get through middle lane with Gideon and help him out a little bit in case he needs it. But the thing is, jungle's not going to spawn before the minions spawn, so we're going to sit in a lane and get some CXP while we can until we have to go to the jungle and actually kill jungle minions and get our own CXP. The next skill you want to get is Shadow Walk. As you can see here, it lasts a long time and you can just stay invisible. As long as as there's not wards in the lane this is a great option for Kalari because she's not gonna be able to take out red and blue buffs herself really efficiently in the beginning and this will help going through side to side of the jungle and get some extra CXP while you can also this will help out any lane that you try to assist because if the enemy team overextends you'll be able to capitalize that coming out of shadow walk with your first hit will do extra damage right after hit him with your crippling dagger and there be shit out of luck and they have to take that L Next, we're going to get Stalker's Key. This will give us 4 Life Leech, 2 Harvester Keys, and give us 50% extra damage in the jungle, which is huge, especially for Kalari because their damage is so low in the beginning. Now, the enemy team has a Kalari as well, and she's trying to steal my jungle here. I catch her off guard with my invisibility. I have no clue where she just jumped off to. I see her going to Invisible Pool, make a great educated guess, and use my Crippling Dagger and take her out. We got our first kill. Best Kalari, North America. Nah, just kidding. No, but seriously. Next up, we're going to get a Wind Cover Blade. This will leave us with 15.2 physical damage and 113.5 attack speed. Now you should be able to take out red and blue efficiently. Don't forget to use your Crippling Dagger on these targets to take them out even quicker for 251 damage right now using the Reaper's Key. We're going to teleport over here using our ultimate and see if we can't get a kill. As we teleport over here, I noticed that I teleported on the wrong target, and that is very common with the Kalari ultimate. However, we managed to get the kill on Grim and backflip out of the way from Gideon, and we go right back into Shadow Walk. Out of Shadow Walk, your first initial hit is going to do extra damage, which I did there, and I used my Crippling Dagger to do some damage. Instead of engaging on Gideon, again, I saw that our team Sparrow needed some help, and Murdoch manages to hit an ult on the enemy team Kalari and take him out. Unfortunately, I missed this dagger here. I was trying to get a little fancy, and, well, I could have made a simple dagger throw and got that, but I missed. Sad, sad day for little Nabori. And out of that sadness, we come out of our shadow walk here and attack the enemy team's Grim. He's going to take some consistent 73 damage as we drop down here in the visible pool. I'm going to use my dagger before he gets to use his displacement blast, so he has to eat that damage. One of you guys has asked to see some of my mistakes, and well, this is a huge one. I did not realize that she was under her tower as I ulted in, and well, quickly our success turns into another sad, sad day. Our next upgrades are going to be a Kinetic and a Minor Strike. This will bring us to 22.7 physical damage and 129.3 attack speed. In my opinion, Kalari is meant to look for opportunities where someone's overextended, has low health, or to assist your teammates in surviving or taking out of a target. I don't consider this kill stealing because that's what Kalari is meant to do. She's meant to be an assassin. She's not a fighter like Grux or Fang Mao, so you do not have that opportunity to actually search for targets to kill. You need to search for opportunities as this. She has no clue that I'm there. Come in with my shadow walk and hit her with a crippling dagger to stop her movement. I'm going to continually hit her as she gets rocked by me because she had low health and that was an opportunity. Since I knew someone was going to pick up the Harvester, I'm going to pick up another Wing Carver Blade with those three points. As we get those extra three points here, we're going to spend it on the previous Wing Carver's Blade, and we're going to get a Minor Kinetic. The next one, we're going to get a Strike. This will leave us with 53 damage and 151.6 attack speed. Now let's see what kind of damage we can do now. We're going to jump down here as the enemy team Kalari sees me, that's why there's an eyeball on my back. The enemy team Grim is going to try to drop down Ward because he has no clue where I'm at. He takes 194 damage from my crippling dagger as my teammate Decker takes him out with that final hit. Unfortunately, we don't get to pursue this enemy team Decker and we make our way back to the shadows. As I'll say over and over in this video, opportunities are Kalari's best friend here. 
As you can see here, Sparrow has no clue that I was even there yet again. But me and Decker pursue on the enemy team Sparrow. I hit her with a crippling dagger to slow her down. And my teammate Decker takes her out with a final hit for another assist. Let's fast forward to here, and shortly after, I get attacked by enemy team Kalari. I did not notice Grim was there, but you need to use your shadow walk accordingly in certain situations. You can either fight and die, or run away and fight for another day. As you can see here, I try to scurry around, and, but keep in mind, if there's an enemy team Kalari, if she goes into shadow walk, she can see you, and so can your teammates, as long as they're within a certain distance. Now we're going to chill here in this lane here, as we try to prevent them to push this, just in case they decide to push push but we're gonna see here another opportunity is gonna come up because I stayed in this lane to try to defend it in case they pushed as I see my teammates trying to start to push right lane with me here coming back from spawn I'm gonna slink around the right side here towards this harvester and try to get around them on the back side they got grim and sparrow here yet again and we're gonna make our way around them because we are a sneaky sneaky and with Kalari now you can almost indefinitely stay invisible so the enemy team does not see you we're gonna come around the back side here and we're gonna remain invisible as we get through here we're gonna try to go back into shadow walk as we engage on these targets to help Help out my two teammates here. Decker uses his ultimate. I'm going to go in here and poke on Sparrow here and back off through Decker's ultimate so I don't get hit by any of that mess. They're going to manage to take out the enemy team's Grim as I continue to pursue the enemy team Sparrow because she seems like the weak link of this team and we're just going to keep moving back and forth so she has a hard time hitting me with that range as I'm close up and slink around here there. She ends up getting killed and we get our next kill. This is a phenomenal day for Kalari ladies and gentlemen. As I'm collecting the Harvester, I see that the enemy team Kalari is going to ultimate someone on my team. So I scan the area to see who it's going to be, and it's going to be my teammate Decker. She's alone, there's only her and Kalari here. So I'm going to use my ultimate and go in here, use my crippling dagger to slow him down, or her, whoever the character is being played by. And I'm going to push forward 96 damage consistently and take her out with that last uppercut. We make it out to another day, save Decker's life, and we get ourselves our sixth kill. Is it me or is this music beat you want to whisper? I don't know. I think I'm crazy. Next up, the enemy team Grim is trying to push middle here, and it's another opportunity as my teammate Murdoch ultimates him, and I get the final hit on Grim to take him out for our seventh kill. Now that we have six points to spend, let's spend it on our Wind Carver Blade. We're going to put two major strikes in this. This will leave us with 106.1 damage and 160.8 attack speed. Sparrow yet again is caught off guard, but I managed to miss that. I hit her with my dagger there to stop her in her shift run, and we managed to take her out. Me and my team Sparrow, she is going to be a goner. Thank you for my eighth kill, and let's move on to the next situation. And by situation, I mean, man, your boy here, one and only Nabori, messed up yet again. I do manage to kill Kalari here. However, I should have went after Gideon first, as you can see here. He throws down his ultimate. I could have stayed in and kept attacking Gideon, but I still probably would have died. But, well, yeah, that happened, ladies and gentlemen. Next up, we're going to remove our strike token and replace it with a wind carver blade. We'll have one point to spend here, so we're going to put it in our stalker's key for a little bit more life leech with a lesser drain. Our attack speed is now 70.2. At this point, we have some action going on in the middle, and I see that Grim is going to be engaged by my team's Murdoch, and I'm going to let him go to town on him. As I see the enemy team Decker over here trying to engage and stop my teammates, I'm going to block her off and go after her to separate their team in the team fight. Hit her with a simple dagger there, and she gets stopped dead in her tracks, literally with 218 damage. I come back to help my teammates here, but they managed to take them out before I get there, and that was a phenomenal team fight. Surprise, surprise, Sparrow overextended a little bit too much again, and I was there to capitalize on her mistakes. Since she has no escape, she's going to back up here, but I get put in a cage by the enemy team Decker. But sadly for her, I jumped out and I took her out as my team Decker blocks them all off with her ultimate. I'm going to go invisible here again, and I'm going to re-engage these targets here just to help out my teammates. But we're going to not manage to stop the enemy team's Grim here. He sees me. He knows I'm here. So I'm going to have to move really quickly so he doesn't hit me with that and slows me down. We're going to come back here and attack the enemy team's Gideon. Unfortunately, our Decker is going to get shit on right there. I'm going to back up here and I'm going to leap out of the way here as my teammate Murdoch kills the crap out of the enemy team Gideon. 
I'm going to re-engage here with my invisibility, sneak right in with my ultimate, and take that kill on the enemy team's Grim. Jump in here, use a dagger to slow down the enemy team Decker. I jump a little bit too far, but luckily I jumped up in front of her, and we managed to get another kill within that team fight. We're at 13 kills. Let's go, baby. We need to get a hashtag going. No Kalari Q dodge. Not a lot of action has been happening, so I've been in the jungle farming. I see my next target here. I'm going to use my ultimate on them to engage in them and get the kill there for my 14th kill. Unfortunately, this target up here is going to get away, and my teammate was not close enough to get that kill, so I took the advantage and used my ultimate to get it while I was through the jungle. Now, you're always going to want to pay attention when you're in the jungle for opportunities like of this, where you can get your next kill without really having any effort and not being too far away from your CXP in the jungle at all times. Now you'll see here another little mistake. I used my ultimate to get away from this enemy team Kalari. Unfortunately, I teleported on the enemy team's Grim. He had his ultimate and well, my invisibility did not save me from that enemy team's Grim. So whether you're invisible or not, he can get you with his ultimate as long as he engaged it before you went invisible. Since we have tons of points now, we're going to get two major strikes and a regular strike in our Wind Carver Blade. Then we're going to remove our Stalker's Key and get our first Fountain Spike. In this, we're going to put three major strikes. Since we don't have a third point for this, we're not going to get rid of our Health or Mana Potion because we need this in the team fights and for sustainability at this point. This will bring us to 227.3 physical damage and an extra 75 mana. I see that middle needs some help. I ultimate on the Gideon while he's in his ultimate and take him out so he does not hurt my teammates any further. Sparrow once again is going to get the short end of the stick here as she gets killed by the end of my blade here. Decker's going to back up through her ultimate here and I'm going to use my invisibility so she can't keep engaging on me. I'm going to re-engage on middle to help out my teammates here. Fortunately, the enemy team Grim gets killed kill before he kills my teammates we're gonna keep engaging on the enemy team Decker and we'll fast forward to here a little bit as my teammate Murdoch takes out Decker after I pursued her a little bit in the middle our next purchase is here we're gonna get our final upgrade on the first fountain spike in this we're gonna put our final major strike next we're gonna delete our health potion and this we're gonna put another fountain spike in this we'll put a major strike this will leave us with 295.5 physical damage and another 75 mana this has to be my favorite kill of the match I saw that the enemy team Kalari was low health well I'm gonna search her out with my ultimate she jumps through the jungle here and I managed to kill her mid-air oh my god here I'll most definitely take a death, but I'm gonna help out in the team fight. Ultimate in to attack the enemy team Grim. I do not get that kill. My teammate Gideon does. We're gonna keep attacking this poor, poor sparrow. But unfortunately, the enemy team Kalari sneaks out behind me. And ouch. Our next upgrade on the fountain spike is gonna be a regular strike. We're gonna save our mana potion. We could have upgraded this all the way, but we're gonna save our mana potion because we're gonna need it. I don't know, officer. She walked right into it. Yoink. I was pushing mid lane and I accidentally hit my ultimate. No, I'm just kidding. I did this on purpose. Shh, don't tell Marek. I'm going to dive right in, hit him with a dagger, and take him out with 316 damage and get my 21st kill. We're going to delete our mana potion and put a regular strike in the other fountain spike. We're going to buy a fountain spike and put three strikes in this. This will leave us with 409 damage and 178.1 attack speed. The damage you can expect on your basic attack is 367 damage on an unarmored target. And I hope you guys enjoyed my Kalari building guide. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. If you want to see any other builds, let me know in the comments below. And so I know to make more Paragon content, be sure to hit the like button. And if you're new to my channel, be sure to hit the subscribe. I appreciate you guys, and I hope you guys enjoyed this sensual moment with your boy, Nobori. Best Kalari North America. No, just kidding. Plus, here's